Um, so, dear guests, здравствуйте, дорогие друзья. Мы готовы начинать наш день открытых дверей. Um, so, shall I, shall I ah, okay. Слышно? Все нормально? Yeah? Okay. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, welcome to AIR, to the new space of the... So I would like to welcome you to uh, Art Itmo Residency, to the air space, new hybrid space of Itmo University, to the open day of the Art and Science Master's program. My name is Alia, I'm the head of the Art and Science Center, and well, by the way I talk, I will present all the speakers. Uh, so I welcomed you, now I would like to welcome all our online participants who are in YouTube with us, and I would ask everyone who's watching us on YouTube if you could just um, write your city or country, because we know that there are people who are joining us from uh, different cities and countries. Um, so, um, this is the first open day in 2021 uh, of, the, of this master's program, and as I've said, we are here at the AIR, a new space of Itmo University, which is an exhibition space, it's a studio, it's a residency for interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary artists, and um, when it comes to art and science uh, master's program, I hope you have an understanding of what it is. But um, in case you don't, uh, basically it's a field in contemporary art, in a direction part of contemporary art, where artists use um, the language of science and technologies to create their works. It can be artificial intelligence, it can be robotics, it can be biotechnologies. And uh, uh, basically, if we are talking about technologies and science, um, it's kind of logical that this program is being developed at the ITMO University, one of the top uh, technical universities in Russia. Um, so it's a basic information about the number of students. And um, on the next slide, you can see the top priority research fields um, of ITMO University, which are AI, automation security, robotics, uh, biotechnologies, uh, biochemistry and quantum communications. Um, so it's a kind of this program gives an excellent opportunity to invite artists to develop their project in collaboration with all these labs. What's happening? Sorry. And if we talk about the benefits of the program, uh, all the students are working with professional artists, scientists, and curators. Um, they enjoy access to the, you know, to the labs of Itmo University and can basically create their projects um, with all the scientists who work at Itmo University. And they, by studying in the program, they become the part of this art and science community. And most importantly, they can present their projects um, here in the space or on international platforms. One of the benefits is also that the program is taught in English, so we are that's why we're speaking English today. Um, speaking about working with professional artists, these are some of the artists who our students have been working with um, during artistic studios. So they work on their projects, they apply to different open calls, um, and can consult artists and curators directly. Um, this is a photo of our first graduates because the program was introduced in 2018. So last year we had our first grads who exhibited their projects uh, here in the space in the Access Modes exhibition. Um, so this is Laura presenting her project. Um, as I've said, you will be participating in different events. For example, this year our students were participating in Ars Electronic Festival in the Pertangardenia project. Um, some of our students can develop their curatorial uh, projects. For example, one of the projects of our students uh, was um, made with the uh, soil museum, the Puchaya Soil Museum in St. Petersburg, and it's a very interesting educational and exhibitional project that is to be continued, in fact. Um, so that's a brief uh, information about who we're looking for. It can be artists who are interested in, uh, in art and science and working with labs. It can be curators and uh, researchers who are interested, again, in this field. Um, and you can be, in fact, engineers or um, uh, coders 
uh, robotic students who want to learn more about art and to create artistic projects. Um, so we are constantly de developing the program and um, introducing different changes. So this year we decided to uh, introduce several new majors and uh, for these students we will have three majors which are the digital art, the new special, technological arts uh, towards the new intelligence and bio art, and media and new nature. And now I would like to uh, give the floor to curators. Uh, I would like, yeah, I have to mention that Dmitry Ezerkov, head of the um, Department of Contemporary Art at the Hermitage Museum, is the head of the master's program. But unfortunately, he's on a uh, business trip and couldn't join us today. Um, as I've said, we have three majors and we also have three curators for each major and for the program. Um, so we have Laura Rodriguez Torres, um, our graduate, in fact, a uh, biotechnologist and artist, uh, Vadim Smati, um, creative engineer, artist, um, curator of the digital art major, um, Maria Kupcova, transdisciplinary artist and researcher and curator of the technological art major. Uh, just as I'm presenting the speakers, uh, Lina Kiprushnik is um, the coordinator of the master's program, the person who is always in contact with all the students, and she will tell us about admissions later. So now I would like to give the floor to um, Vadim. Right. Sorry, I, I don't put in, uh, the microphone close to this <laughs> because it's not so COVID friendly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so now we can hear it. Yeah. So uh, we decided to eliminate the discourse uh, a bit about the boundaries between art and science and introduce you a kind of a new way of studying it and teaching for ourselves. Because uh, if you look at the next slide, I put it there um, a classical like um, I think physics problem. Uh, it's called the free body problem. So it's a problem about like a determination of uh, free bodies in a space where uh, every body kind of affected not only by space but also about other bodies. And this is what our program is about. So basically we are de detached and separated into three different disciplines like a digital, technological and biological. But then we kind of intervene the, everything with each other and starting to look how uh, both of these disciplines can affect each other and how uh, they all can mm, describe the art of science uh, discourse. So uh, we want to kind of eliminate the boundaries not only by these disciplines like biological, technological, digital, but we also want to disseminate the boundaries in between doing something and thinking about something. So we want to make it all practical but still thoughtful, while um, the thought uh, is kind of deeply connected to what we are doing. And uh, in the next like minutes, we will describe you how we will do this. So uh, what we are looking now is in graduates from different programs. Yeah, this is a very open uh, master program, so we can receive students with different background. It can be from technological, engineering, or art uh, bachelors that they are looking for, explore the interdisciplinarity 
between the departments that already have been mentioned. During your studies here, you will have several technological courses, so you will acquire the skills. It's a very demanding course. It's a very demanding master program, so you need to be ready to really engage uh, to it. And these courses ranging from electronics, programming, and even uh, courses from molecular biology. But it also combines the philosophical and curatorial courses uh, to open the possibilities for you to work in art. Uh, during the program, you will analyze, create, and coordinate the elaboration of artworks and exhibitions. So what we expect is that in the future, you will be able to get uh, different opportunities in the, inside cultural and art institutions. You can also pursue an academic career if you would like to continue with a PhD and create art and science initiatives by your own. I think Inma University now is pushing really forward the startup and innovation and art and science is a, a field that you will work in this, in this innovation, innovative project. And also if you would like to continue your personal artistic career. Yeah, and we were uh, thinking with the colleagues for like a long time designing the program and it's uh, what we actually will be having within the program. Now. So I want to uh, give you a short intro to the curriculum and uh, the studies within two years master program uh, consists of mainly three types of uh, classes, three types of the seminars. You know, theoretical, skills, more practical, and the studio. You know, so from the theoretical courses we will see, you know, that we will learn the aesthetics, we will search for new aesthetics, we will learn the history, the theory of contemporary art. You now in the courses of creative coding, we will learn the skills, necessary skills, that we now strongly believe are forming the new aesthetics and helping to the artists develop a new vision. Uh, and what is the most important for is the studio where everything is based like the, in the project. Uh, and the projects uh, consist of a combination of the theoretical and practical knowledge. So I don't know if I, I, if I need to go briefly through the seminars now. So the first seminar was uh, we'll be introducing you as a uh, students who are coming first year to school, now to the master program, uh, introducing to the first theoretical and skills, and in the second part of the semester, we will be jumping to the introductory artistic studio, where you, will, where you will try different disciplines in order to understand which vision for you is uh, more like, which is your vision. Now, in the second semester, uh, we will already need to decide you know, in which direction to Go. Which major would you like, would you like to choose? And uh, uh, so you will need to make up your mind, basically. You know? And uh, you see here on the right, there is a uh, we will split our large team of students into the three different directions. But in the parallel, we will also intersect uh, certain seminars, which will be running more. Um, well, some of them will run as a seminar is going throughout the semester, and others will be structured as a workshop based where you all together will be bringing different knowledge from your disciplines in the common uh, workshops. So a third, uh, third, seminar, uh, third semester sorry, uh, will be again focused mainly on the different majors and at the end of the semester you again will have a chance to, to meet together in order to finalize you know, your uh, the semester within the common workshops. And the fourth semester is, is uh, focused mainly on your thesis, on your master thesis, where you are crystallizing all the knowledge that you collected through the program and basically, uh, yeah, crystallizing and creating your personal work, your personal thesis. So, um, I think that mainly all about the schedule, uh, I would like to... Okay, thank you. So, as a coordinator of the BioR, BioMedia and New Nature, I would like to give you some examples of what you could learn if you choose this specialty. Uh, so we have the prefix bio in the program. Bio means life. So in this planet, the basic molecule for life will be DNA. 
then uh, we can go to a cell, maybe a tissue, an organism, then the society, the ecology, the planet itself. And uh, so during the BioR master program, we will learn how to work with the living materials, starting from the DNA. So I would like to show some of the artworks uh, and try to explain the methodology that we will try to use. So when the artists and the students come into the laboratories, they learn new technologies. For example, in this image to the right, uh, you can see this gel. This is how in the lab the scientists are visualizing DNA bands. So these little bands that you see there are fragments of DNA. And this helps us to isolate DNA. And there is an artist, Paul Benoist, that took this technology to create an artwork. So, in fact, uh, BioR is using the biotechnology just as a tool sometimes, but it can be also part of the research. In this case, it's using the, the electrophoresis gel as a tool to create an artwork when he takes the DNA not as an entity that creates humans, but as an entity to make art itself. So now it will be a material to create some images, for example, in the project uh, of the protocol, Latin figure protocol, he created these artworks, these images, just with DNA. Uh, so it was like, we have a mix of DNA and there is a Latin figure there. Then we separate it, the DNA gets separated by the electrical, electrical field, and then we reveal the image hidden. And he also used the same technology because in science when we are using this gel and the DNA goes from the top to the bottom by electrical field, we call it running. So the DNA is running. And he made a artwork when he put DNA from his mother, family, sister to run in a gel of one meter approximately. And here he is talking about uh, a race in the sense of running, but also he came from a multicultural family. So he was making a statement about the uh, differences we make morpholo morphologically and by uh, now by DNA in the sense of race. Uh, okay. So basically what he did in, in the project was a race about race when he erased the body. So there is no body. Uh, then when we pass from DNA, we can pass through genes. And then in BioR projects, you can also work with modification of the genome or modification of organisms. So the artist, Joe Davis, combined a gene from a marine sponge to a silk mold. And this gene of the marine sponge, it takes different metals from the environment. So when he put the gene into the silk uh, mold, the mold creates a silk fiber with the protein from the marine sponge. And then he put a solution of gold, so the fibers took the gold and create a fantasy, uh, well, in, in create the object from a fantasy from the fairy tales when we want, when they say that we will make uh, fabrics from gold. So this is kind of making al alchemy, but with real technology. Uh, so then, from genes, we go to bacteria. Our students have been working with bacteria in the laboratories. Uh, and in your skin right now, there are hundreds of bacteria, millions. In your gut right now, there is also a lot of bacteria. So these bring questions about identity. How many bacteria are living in your, cell, in your body right now? Uh, artists like Melissa Fisher is questioning her own identity. Uh, by uh, showing in the sculptures of her own body the microbial me, the other part of me, the microorganisms that live in me. Also, in BioR is not only about working and creating installations or sculptures, but it can be also a performative. Uh, that's why I wanted to mention this project with Sonia Paumel. When uh, she uh, embodies the humans into the petri dish that is uh, where in the laboratory we put the microorganism to grow. And after that, you can see the growing of the bacteria from these bodies during the exhibition. Actually, here we also have some bacteria taken from the students. We will see later the artworks, and you will see a little part of the bacteria that lives in one of our students. 
Next one, please. After the bacteria, then we can go to tissues. Uh, this is a project from Oran Katz and Yunasur. Uh, what do you see here in this bowl? Skin. Leather jacket. Well, okay, someone knows this project. <laughs> so it looks like a dress, like a coat. Uh, basically, they made this tree structure with bone inside and then they grow uh, living cells to make this shape of a dress, of a cloth. And the project is talking about the issues of um, labor uh, from labor of animals, how we use animals now to create different materials for human consumption, like leather. So this is the project called Victimless Leather. So basically you create a dress without killing any animal, but there is also some ethical issues because when you grow cells in the laboratory, you still need some media to feed the cells, and this media came from um, pulps of cows. Next one. Uh, so our students engage in these ethical, bioethical discourses. Uh, in this exhibition, you will also see the project of Natalia Malinina, one of the students, where she talks about uh, the fragility of the mice uh, that we and the cells that we use in the laboratory to work in engineering tissue. So the mice, the cells of mice that we use in the laboratories were taken uh, several um, decades ago from a mice, and these mice already died, but we still keep using the cells because we preserve it in the fridge, in the agriculture. So she was trying to give back identity to these cells by making the sculpture. Uh, then another, when we escalate in the organization of life, then we start with organisms, for example, plants. Uh, a very interesting field in bio art is the perception of plants. And here Stella Petrick uh, made a research where she discovered inside all the leaves from the plants, these little stomas, that they look like leaves. And she read this movement the stomach that open and close to ca capture the um, carbon dioxide. And by making the analogy of leaves, uh, she collaborated with people and scientists that read leaves uh, as, the, in, as a practice for the communication with people that have deficit of hearing. And then she created the language of um, what the plants are saying. So the interpreter read the leaves of the plants, of the stones, as they were words uh, of humans, and create a discourse. Of course... Uh, so this Institute for Inconspicuous here, Languages uh, is about sense, also, trying to uh, understand what the plants are saying. Uh, for this, we employ uh, two types of professionals. One are uh, actual interpreters for the deaf that are very good at reading lips, at lip reading, and the other is an algorithm that is also trained, a neural network algorithm trained to read lips. Now you ask yourself, but plants do not have lips, right? Well, they do, and they're microscopic. There's thousands of them on each leaf on the underside. And actually, uh, much like our human mouths, um, the plant mouths are used for breathing, for exchanging gas, for also controlling uh, so they don't dehydrate. The words that the plants were saying were in the walls, and also you can hear the whispering, so it was called gossip flowers. We were trying to hear what the flowers were saying when humans were not there. And of course, we have other types of organisms. In bio we can also work with uh, animals. In this case, there is a group uh, from Russia where the dog, where dogs run. Uh, they were talking about identity and other virtual selves of this mice that it was in a maze. And the maze was connected to different sensors that understood where the mice was making a choice to turn, but uh, um, saved the idea that the other virtual mice was continue for the other pathway. So uh, there was the real mice and virtual mice uh, running over the labyrinth, and 
the labyrinth was opening and closing doors, trying to uh, avoid the encounter of the real mice and the virtual mice. So we're talking also about behavior, uh, study of behavior inside biomedia. Uh, there is another of the professors, Magis Mekra, she is working with uh, her dog. Uh, she has been working in biology, understanding the hormonal level connection. And now she's trying also to work with neural networks. Uh, and now this is a ongoing research with every day she jumps into this structure with her dog and the neural network is recording the behavior of the animal. Uh, our students have also worked with pool organisms. In this case, Pisarum polycephalum is um, uh, whole organisms and they create the idea of how to relate to organisms and technology to predict our future. So basically you could put your hand, there was a scanner, and because this organism moves, the organism will grow around your hand and make an analogy of reading hand um, pseudo practices, pseudo science practices, I don't know and give you a prediction made by neural network. And if they were talking about our reliance, on how we depend now in technology, how do we trust, and how we should be a little bit more critical with everything that we see. Um, then, after organisms, we are also studying the environment. And in the environment, there is a lot of other molecules, and these molecules, for example, produce a smell. And we had a practice this last semester when we were sweating and we were making exercise and we took the sweat of our body and create our own perfume with Lindsay Wells. And there is artists also working with the idea of smell and other, in this case, the smell of slavery. Uh, this is the main question of labor from Paul Venus, where he collected different bacteria for people that was uh, in Extreme condition, working in extreme conditions, and extract the odor of these, uh, extract the bacteria, create a culture, and then impregnate in a new t-shirt. The, I wanted to show this because uh, in, when you present bio artworks, bio art in a gallery, you need to consider that this is alive. So there is a lot of conditions that a curator or a manager of a gallery should uh, learn if they want to keep up with the trends of the artworks that are exhibited in the galleries. When you see a culture of bacteria, it usually looks like dirty water. But here the curator or the designer made a great uh, exhibition because they put this bright orange light that looks like very techno elegant. Uh, so it's also very important, it's one of the skills that you know, we analyze and learn during the course, how to present artworks in bio art. And then of course we also have the all organisms, uh, the malleability of the body. I won't go deep here. Uh, you will see another artwork uh, in this uh, exhibition about the changing of the body. And then after the body, well, we have systems and ecosystems. So bio is also focused in the ecology, sustainability. And we have another of our professors, Ola Kosileva. She has a project called Ethics, Durability, Ecology, and Nature, when she is speculating and making research about how to recreate a nature, a new nature that can um, reduce the harm that humans have made to this planet. And this is a project not about, only about art, but she has collaborations with institutes and research. So now I'm going to give the word for the next specialization. Uh. Yes, uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, and um, so, uh, opposed to uh, bio art visualization, the digital art, it's kind of works uh, with the quantified information. So, um, it, it, it's a visualization that, can, that mm, searches the way how we can digitize uh, this surrounding around us, and also how we can work with this digital surrounding. But um, on, on the next slide, you can see that <laughs> we decided for, for this year uh, to build to, uh, a virtual reality software for medium. And um, the, the old, like, like the core problem with the virtual reality medium is that it's 
a, a little bit uh, overhyped. So it's uh, if you open the um, any kind of the group uh, about virtual reality, you already can see the post like uh, is the virtual reality already dead? So why my virtual reality game uh, doesn't bring you money? So uh, in terms of like uh, mm, the capital cycle where uh, technology gets its adoption and then forms its market, the virtual reality market is really slow, um, small, and it's still uh, an underground technology. So uh, we decided this is a good chance for us uh, to finally find a new meaning for this technology and uh, to start finally asking questions. How virtual reality and uh, extended reality technologies can be used not only for uh, kind of cycles of cap the capital across the society, but also um, help us to understand um, different things about uh, the space around us. So um, we will work uh, with the different um, questions, I think. And these questions, for example, um, as in this project, how the information around us can be digitized and how we can interact with this information. So as a person who worked uh, for a long time in a field of big data and data utilization and data-driven urbanism, I was wondering how mm, the informational layer around us, the information that we generate, the information that we consume, the information that we send to each other, how this layer forms a new space. And this realization we look for this space. It's a space that mm, can not only be seen, but it's also mm, not well understood space. Because it's a space that can be here and it's still there. So this real space is in between. And for example, as in this project, we are looking how mm, the COVID-19 Academy can be converted into a spatial experience while you're traversing through the space and how you can experience uh, this space while you're working through this like an artificial cave. And um, that's basically uh, asks the question of a memory. Because uh, the memory itself, think about it always as about like uh, uh, a thing in our mind. But uh, what was kind of eye-opening to myself that uh, you can start to think about the space as a memory object. And it's also interesting how different old spaces in their micro-architects, like, um, I don't know, the charps on the walls, uh, the food um, steps on, on the floor, they contain the memories, they contain, they contain uh, the information. And then, as in this project, uh, students are using uh, a photogrammetry to convert space, they kind of hospital, hospital experience and an object of a memory that then traverse through the mediums, right? From a, like a mobile application to a cinema to a virtual reality room and allow you to um, speak a story about how um, your own experience, your own experience inside of a space can be memorized and understood and transferred through the digital technology. So you can see here that the digital technology is not only a question of bytes, right? It's also a question of atoms, <laughs> if you kind of paraphrase this uh, bits and atoms uh, sentence. But it's also a question of organization. So how the information and atoms are organized together. So um, oh, let's jump to the next one. And this project of a memory, um, as you can see, can see here, uh, where we digitize uh, one of their old um, sanatoriums, I think, in Vladivostok, where uh, it's like a half destroyed nature appeared in a new digital form which still can be visited, and also it crosses the boundaries not only of, of uh, a digital reality where uh, we basically used to be, but also <laughs> uh, it crosses the reality uh, physical while we are. Um, transferring this uh, digital object from one space to another. And uh, it, it's also um, move us to a new um, type of architecture, the architecture uh, of experience where we finally might um, digitize uh, the experience that we are not only, um, I mean, I mean we're, not, we're not only digitizing the space that we are existing in, we also digitize the experience of us inside of the space. And it's creates a new uh, type of space for us where we can coexist not only with other people but also we can coexist with a different other species. And uh, this multi-species uh, vision reality is basically our target in this program. So we will learn how to capture reality, how to architecture it, 
of, and also how to coexist there together with other people and with other species and with other spaces. Um, uh, on the next slide, you uh, see uh, the Metropolis project uh, that was done uh, by an art and science students already. You can visit it uh, on a virtual reality exhibition that we run, uh, I think, in the end of, of the previous year. Uh, it was uh, an interesting project because they worked with a um, memory of um, like um, uh, d different layers of, of reality, like uh, different layers of cities, and then uh, architecture a multi-layered system which you can visit, which you can feel, which you can touch. Um, uh, and um, it, it, it's also interesting how um, we can raise uh, the special question because uh, I mean. Um, we, we always think that um, the, the virtual reality is a kind of um, conversion of a one one object, like when we convert uh, a, a real space into a virtual one. But instead, it's kind of more complex way, because while we convert the space, while we're converting um, the one watch object into another, the something changes. And the something is not uh, lies only how we store this digital self inside of the virtual uh, one. So it's also something changes in this physical layer, because uh, this virtuality that we are creating, it's closely connected to our f physical environment where we consume it. And this was created in new type of experience, in new type of architecture, and in new type of uh, spatial exploration. Yeah, now I'm passing to Maria. Thank you very much. Yeah, wow, that's really exciting to listen to. <laughs> yeah, if uh, Laura is questioning more the living, now, Vadim is questioning more the digital. Now, probably I will be re-questioning uh, the living through the digital in order to come back to the maybe reinvented nature. Now, reinvented uh, like a new living uh, through the technology. So, I think we can go to the next slide. And basically, I will be always thinking with the students uh, on the role of the natural and digital agency within the design process and questioning that. I really like to show this project, uh, I really like this visual. It's one of the projects that we are developing in uh, University of Innsbruck uh, together with our students with Claudia Pasquera and uh, where we are working with the small robotics, with the small drones which are scanning the existing terrain of Alps in order to reinvent a new design vision of this landscape. The new design vision which is not necessarily done for human, but done for maybe machines, maybe nature, maybe the uh, biological agency, maybe for, I don't know. So there's every time the question. So how we could think that we are uh, um, kind of spreading the intelligence within the design process between the human, natural, and digital agency. And this project, if we go to the next slide, it's introducing the strategy how we could operate with the synthetic landscape by the machinic operations, by the uh, introducing uh, within the design process the uh, forces that we have within the nature in order to design a new inhabitable landscape. And if we go to the next slide, we could think on the vision how we could start programming. You know, and if we go to the next, how we could start programming the nature with the digital means uh, and introducing new kind of, I call it technology, new kind of biotechnology you know, in order to recreate the environment. So this project introduced the bio structures uh, which are uh, synthetically programmed you know, by the means of recursive algorithms. Or he could rethink the object itself, how we think the technology itself, how the technology could become ecological how we could change the aesthetics in our perception of the technology and our, uh, yeah, for example, how we could create the environment or object which could be living or which could be co-inhabited maybe with the biological agency. Here, for example, this uh, structure of Hortus that we were preparing together with the Ecologic Studio for Pompidou uh, in uh, February 2019. Now this structure, which is 3D printed from recycled uh, PLA, you now that's basically the material that we are every time using for all our battles, you know, which, which is inhabited 
by the uh, different species of algae. You know? So basically, how does the uh, objectness can become performative? How we could create the structures which can breathe, which could interact with our skin? How we could change the aesthetics of our um, living environment? And uh, next uh, project is also introducing another uh, this project we were developing with the students in Barcelona at the Institute of Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. And here we are introducing a new vision of a machine, which is now driven not anymore by the gears and uh, uh, data, but a machine which could be driven by the biological intelligence, which basically introducing, again, certain uh, amounts of algae in order to produce a minimum current and could activate itself by the uh, intelligence and by the forces of the biological method. Uh, so here, I really love this project for this emerging of the technology, of the new understanding of the technology. And um, um, here, this is a project that we are developing. We were developing, uh, our students were developing in Vladivostok and it's a part of the net um, our art initiative. And we can maybe go to the video. Uh, so how we can extract Basically, there is a question how we can extract the intelligence of the biological matter and how we could speculate on the new type of nature, on the new type of ecology, how we create a new vision. Because I really believe that our role as an artist, maybe as a, if you prefer a designer, if you prefer an architect, or I don't know who you consider yourself, not as, a, as authors. So we are really creating the aesthetics you know, that we are inhabiting. So we're creating the vision of our world. And I think that's very meaningful uh, like role of the artist who is creating basically the, I don't know, who's creating the information, who's creating the vision, who's creating basically the whole thing that we live in, you know, uh, communication, uh, communication. So, and here we are trying to um, recreate the new catalog, the new artistic, like synthetic or gun created uh, plants and what if we, for example, extract the intelligence of the biological uh, plant in order to start programming our structure. This is part of my PhD, wherein um, I'm, I'm doing PhD in the University of Innsbruck. Taking uh, 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 lots of uh, re uh, biological matter, biological structure, and starting to create, recreate the artificial uh, fibers in order to start printing it. And um, maybe we can also go a, a bit further just to see the methodology and the way how we can start applying it. So, and of course the machine here, yeah, we can just leave the video maybe, that's perfect. So, uh, and of course the machine here is, the, is taking a perfect role. You know? uh, and uh, how do we actually interact with the machine? How do we create this human-machine interaction? You know? And what is, the, what is the machine itself? Is it the biological machine? Is it the technological machine? Now we believe that it's basically merged. And of course, if we go to the next slide, we at a certain moment come to the idea of a human, you know, of those our students uh, in Vladivostok who are developing project uh, together with performance was actually sh showcased in, uh, in, in many places, I think, now in Moscow, in Ekaterinburg, so Marina, one of the authors, is actually sitting here. So, and how we could actually question ourselves, how cyborgian we are becoming. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine, we can just leave maybe the video as well, that's fine. So, uh, yeah, um, how do we understand in this concept ourselves, and how we can come from maybe uh, screen media, how we can come back to the analog media, how we can start activating our sensors, which are not only visual, but how we can activate our carnal sensorics, how we could work maybe with the sound, how we could create a new types of interaction of our body with space, how we could rethink our body, which is now basically augmented and spread you know, within the technology within the biology and how this concept of the technology and biology is changing. Just a bit.
Okay, thank you, Maria. Um, so now I'd like to <coughs> say a couple of words <coughs> sorry, about the speakers of the program. Um, so in addition to curators, we have what's, you've seen them on the previous slides, uh, curators, artists such as Helena Nikonole, Dmitry Maros, Natalia Fyodorova, um, so Ekaterina Nikitina, so you can, you can read all this information. Darya Kurov, all of them are practicing artists and curators who work in the field of art and science, researchers as well. Maris Shoshenkov, um, having artistic studio on site. Daria Milia, curator from ZKM, who's given the course on curating art and science, which is also an important part of the studies. Uh, Robertina Shibyanic, uh, working with, uh, um, uh, actually, the problems of ecology and marine studies. Uh, Lindsay Walsh, as Laura mentioned, Maya Shmerekar, and Dmitry Zerkov, of course, who will be teaching the course in contemporary art. Uh, and now I would like to give the floor to Pete, who will tell us about the admissions, uh, which is also an important part of, um, of the program. Thank you. Uh, very happy to see you all here today. Uh, so I really hope that after um, listening to our curators about the project and the program, you're now uh, very inspired and wondering how you can become a part of it. So this year we have uh, 32 uh, tuition free places, uh, 32 budgetных мест, and 15 uh, contract based places, uh, 15 contract мест. And uh, this year we are for the first time introducing a grant for international applicants uh, that can cover all tuition uh, fees for two years of studies. So we are looking forward to getting your applications. Uh, now I'll tell you how you can do that. So this year we have uh, four admissions options. Uh, we have two uh, portfolio competitions. I will tell you the difference about them later. We have online and offline uh, entrance exams. And we have a I'm professional competition, uh, which is a, like a separate competition um, with uh, the deadline set by the Yandex. So, Art and Science Portfolio Competition. Uh, to uh, participate in it, you need to fill out the application like in other competitions and attach your artistic portfolio and motivation letter and also have an interview with the curators of the program uh, which you are looking at right now. Uh, this is a competition which works best for uh, artists and uh, those who would like to uh, pursue artistic career. Uh, the most important thing here uh, is your uh, motivation, of course, uh, your project, your ideas for your projects at the program. And uh, already next week we are um, ready to receive your applications. And we are also launching a series of portfolio reviews uh, this year with curators of the program where you can um, we can have a Zoom call and you can uh, show us your portfolio and the curators can give you some comments on how to improve it, uh, to present uh, the information and how to make it um, work best for the admissions. The next uh, competition is uh, ITMO University Portfolio Contest. It contest. It's a general context for all um, programs at ITMO. And, um, um, What's so different about uh, this one? Um, basically, it rather works best for those who have some maybe research background because it requires you to um, submit at least one uh, report at a conference or at a seminar and uh, or a publication. And also your um, exam grade, average exam grade, should not be lower than uh, 4.3. Um, here, uh, the same, uh, you need to fill out the application, attach your portfolio, it can be articles, it can be participation in different events, workshops, uh, anything that you think uh, might be relevant to uh, the program. And we are already uh, receiving the application for this one, so you can apply already now, today. Uh, for both competitions, uh, we are announcing the results in June. Uh, Entrance exams is probably the most traditional uh, option. 
They can be held uh, online and offline this year, uh, well, we hope. Um, the exam consists of two parts. Uh, the first one is you get two questions from the list of questions. There are like uh, 30 questions. The list is published on the website. Uh, you write or um, yeah, uh, you write your answer to these questions uh, or type it, and then uh, you have an interview again with the curators to learn about your motivation, your project, your ideas, uh, basically to get to know you. Uh, the exams are held from May to August. You can choose any convenient date available. Uh, and uh, to help you uh, prepare for the exams, we launched last year Art and Science Premasters. It's a free, uh, uh, intensive crash course uh, for those who would like to prepare for the exam. Uh, it covers uh, the, the majority of the questions uh, from the list. Uh, you learn about history of science art, uh, different uh, directions of science art, about robotics art, about bio art, uh, technological art, and digital art, about different media, and about philosophical uh, conceptions and theories which lie in the basis of art and science. And to sign up for this course, uh, you can already uh, write to us now um, on the email mentioned on the slide uh, with a subject line join for masters and uh, that you uh, in spring, uh, in March, I think, when we'll be um, launching the course. The course will have two tracks uh, from April to May. And uh, the last uh, possible option is for those who participate in uh, Yandex Saima professional competition, uh, Olympiade Ya Professional. Uh, so if you are already participating in it, uh, Good luck, and if you win, you, uh, you can um, come to the program, to enroll in the program without any uh, further entrance exams. So, uh, that's it about the admissions, and if you have any questions about it, um, you can ask them afterwards, or contact us uh, on email or write to us in social media. Yes, if we have questions, maybe from offline participants, you are welcome. Or you can think about your questions. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yes, I have two questions on admission. Uh, first two. Uh, the first one, uh, can I participate both in uh, portfolio competition and take an exam? Yes, thank you. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, yes, you can participate in one portfolio contest, either at my university one or art and science one. Uh, and for example, if you for some reason uh, don't make it to the winners list, you can still go to the exam and enroll in the program um, through this way. And we actually last year had students who um, went through this. So yeah, it's possible. So and the second one is, uh I'm a biologist, so I participate in the Yandex pro uh, professional uh, competition uh, as a biologist uh, in the section biology, biotechnology, and bioinformatics. Can I uh, participate in the competition via this section, or I should be? Uh, yeah, un unfortunately, we can only uh, receive the application from those who uh, are the winners of the design. Okay. So I understand. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions from offline participants? Hello. So I have a question. Uh, like a couple of weeks ago, I watched an uh, Itmo Q&A session about master programs and uh, they told about international education programs that they can give you an opportunity to not only to study abroad but also to get uh, a double degree. Uh, so I have a question about uh, the art and science master program. Is it possible to get uh, not only to study abroad but also to get a double degree? Uh, well, uh, as for this particular intake in 2021, uh, you won't be able to get a double degree, but you will be able to take up to three semesters abroad. 
Okay, like uh, even starting on the first year of the program, I yes, will be able to Yes, starting from the second it. semester. So, oh, okay, yeah. I got it. Thank you. Any other questions? We have some questions from online students. So maybe we can switch to that. Um, so, just to clarify, you don't have to be an artist exactly to apply to this program. What basic skills uh, would be now? Well, basically, as we said, uh, we accept students from different academic backgrounds. You can be um, an artist, you might not be an artist and not have an academic degree in arts or art-related field, but it's motivated student. But you have to be ready that you will have to have classes on art, have to have classes on contemporary art and aesthetics and theories and philosophy if you have, for example, an engineering degree. Um, if you are... Um, if you're an artist, like a traditional artist, you have to be ready um, to engineering and uh, coding classes, machine learning, working with robotics and working in biotechnologies. Uh, so I hope I answered your question. Um, Mo Maria asks, student will be able to create artworks that include artificial intelligence and robotics. Yes, they will be able, basically, yes, this is, Eastmore University is one of the top universities uh, that work with AI, information technologies and robotics, so it's, it's, it will be an essential part of your studies. Yeah, I think maybe we missed a very important point here that we will be uh, within our seminars, within our workshops, which are practice-oriented, we will be always collaborating with the different labs in the Itmo University. So, and absolutely, there are several robotic labs, there are several biotechnological labs, and uh, um, VR, AR technology. Well, I just, uh, it will take maybe 10 minutes just to list all of them. <laughs> so, yeah, and we will always have an access to the labs, we will be collaborating with the tutors here, with the professors here within the university, as well as we'll be bringing professionals who will be introducing you to this technology. So, but um, also maybe don't be afraid and, uh, of jumping within this, uh, I don't know, hardcore skills. So we will always balance, you know, we will always balance between the theoretical knowledge, just theoretical knowledge, and the skills, you know, in order to find this uh, proper composition. Do you want to add? Yes, I, I just wanted to add that, uh, again, I think this topic is crucial, as you said, that, uh, that, that uh, we are mixing the art and technical skills, and we are mixing it from both sides. That's super important. That, so if you are an engineer, for example, yeah, but you want to broaden your vision, of how the engineering is applied in the society, you can come to us. If you are a sociologist who want to understand how technology is created, how you can kind of mix it and create an, an artwork, so maybe a new type of research techniques, you can also come to us. So basically, we are, we are looking uh, to create a cross-disciplinary uh, intake, right? Uh, where people are mixing the hard and soft skills all together, and we want to decimate this division between hard and soft skills at all. So if you are at any point of the spectrum, we are saying we are waiting for you. So it doesn't matter, uh, can you code or do you read a, a lot of art critics? It doesn't matter, you need to be curious and want to mix everything. everything. Yeah, and just just uh, one second more, but also maybe the question would, would, we would have now, but who I would become, is it necessary this kind of I don't know, skilled person, or can I become a creator? Can I become more like a person with theoretical vision? Of course, but we will just introduce you in this case to, into the uh, vision we have now, into the skills, into the basically the reality that we live in the current society in order to uh, frame a tangible and relevant vision. You know? So, uh, yeah, and who will become like a, uh, an alumni of the program that's basically to you, you know, who do you envision? Are you artist? Are you technologist? Are you a theoretician? Are you a creator? So I think that's open up. Like, this question is open. So the next question is, do we have questions from offline? We can mix. Yeah, okay. Okay, one more question. I'm so sorry. So uh, I've just checked Itmo University website and it has uh, um, some extend information about uh, art and science portfolio part, uh, competition and it says that you have to have information about a scientific publication. Is it relevant information or it's not necessary anymore? Uh, 
So you're talking about the ITMA University's competition or art and science? About art and science. Uh, for okay. art and science, no. Uh, it's not mandatory, but you can add it, of course. Okay. okay. Basically, the, the difference between art and science portfolio competition and the university competition is that in art and science portfolio, we don't count, we don't consider your previous diploma uh, results. So even if you have, um, well, not, I don't know, not only excellent marks, you can apply to the program. And the second one is if you have artistic portfolio and you don't have research papers that you will work on, you can like, present your artistic portfolio. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I also have a question related to the portfolio contest, um, the art and science program one. Um, if I want to participate in this contest, but I'm not an artist, uh, can I still do that? For example, if I'm um, helping to organize various exhibitions, can I include that into the portfolio? Yeah, of course, it's perfect. You can add like the exhibition you're organizing, the events, the workshops, everything you are participating. Uh, and which is relevant, uh, and you can also add the projects you're thinking of developing. Mm -hmm. For example, we can discuss it at the portfolio with you. So, yes? This all should be in English or in Russian, or it doesn't matter? Uh, could you repeat, please? Um, all of this should be in English or in Russian, or it doesn't matter? Uh, yes, it should be in English. Okay. One more thing, uh, for the art and science portfolio, basically you can include all your works might be sketches, video art, anything. It doesn't have to be art and science project necessarily. Even if you work as curators. So we have a couple of questions from online um, participants. Um, how many international students uh, you will be taking and from which countries? Basically students from any, from all countries all over the world can apply to the program. And as Linda said, we will have uh, also one scholarship which will cover tuition fees during the study um, period. Uh, do we have any more questions from offline audience? No? So let's, let's move to uh, online participants. Um, is there a scholarship? Yes, there is a scholarship. Uh, is the art and science portfolio only for artist students? So what is the most common option for not ITMO University students and not uh, art students to participate in this program, exam, or eat more portfolio? Uh, I guess we've answered this question, but maybe Lina can clarify. Yes, I think uh, exam is the most um, I know, universal option for everyone, so if you are really motivated and you would like to become a student of the program, uh, you can just uh, take our pre-master's course and also study the materials we have and uh, prepare for the exam and then um, this can be your way to the program. Uh, if you don't have, uh, once again, any project, uh, you can add anything basically to the portfolio, any events, uh, any ideas uh, and we'll consider it. And there is one more question about the career paths of our graduates and students. Uh, and Vadim and Maria also already told about it, but I wanted to mention that the benefit of the program is that it's open for all students with any academic background, uh, which means that uh, some of our graduates with, I don't know, technical background could, well, it could enter the world of contemporary art by studying in the program and getting into this community. And I guess our students who are participating and our graduates will tell about their experience so I think we can, if there are no more questions, we can move to the uh, students' talk about their experience. Um, yeah. um, thank you. So uh, we, have our, we have our students, uh, Sofia, Maria, um, and our graduate, Svetlana. Oh, and Ksenia, yes. Yeah, sure, please welcome. Да, этот работает. So it's 
it's a free kind of free, free microphone. You can tell, share your experience. Uh, who will start? Okay, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Sveta, and uh, I guess I'm the only graduated person uh, for now, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, have been in the first uh, year of art and science program, master program, and I'm super happy to be here again. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. Uh, what can I say about my experience? I guess uh, my experience is uh, pretty different from what uh, girls, for example, have now because uh, at the first year it was a very new program and everything was a little bit unstable and it was a big challenge for everybody. But it was an, uh, an amazing experience and I guess uh, the first thing which comes to my mind is that uh, my uh, emotional state <laughs> was uh, super different from my bachelor background, from my bachelor experience, because every day I came to university, to a new lecture, um, meeting new people, everything was super interesting. It was very different from what I have at my uh, bachelor studies, because I was studying uh, in my university, I was an engineer, and uh, study was... Uh, difficult work without any interest <laughs> and without any happiness. And here everything was super interesting and exciting and difficult, but m mostly challenging, you know, in a good way. And uh, it was a perfect uh, master to change path in a nice and smooth way, because uh, as I already said, um, for my bachelor I was an engineer, but I wanted to change my direction. And this program took me with my engineering diploma and gave me the opportunity to study art. And also I enjoyed um, this um, part with the philosophical studies because for me it was very important uh, to, to gain the philosophical context of um, contemporary art. Also, it was very nice to try different directions, even though it was uh, probably a short course, it's only two weeks, but uh, we were able to work with the living stuff, with the Blake Markello, to work with the computers and uh, program cars, uh, with the demon, uh, to work with the synthesizers uh, and sound and some electric stuff with the diary Google. So yeah, uh, we tried so, a, a lot of stuff. And uh, I need to say that during this study, during these two years, I met amazing people. And with the three of my uh, group mates, we created an art group here of the 019. And we continue to work as an artist. And I guess this is uh, the most valuable part uh, of my study at the Art and Science program. Yeah, it's people, it's people who we met and who are st still uh, help, helps us to develop on the art scene. Because, uh, for example, several weeks ago, we were trying to uh, write an application to an art residence in France. And we just uh, write, wrote to Lina and asked if, if she could help us. <laughs> and of course she helped us. And we got uh, several letters which, uh, which we sent to this application. So even now, I already almost a year graduated, but we have these connections and the help from the program. And also we have five years of um, ability to come to residency and to work uh, here. Of course, it's a little bit different, difficult because of the time and work, but still it's an amazing opportunity. Uh, yes, so I uh, 
can talk about my endless love <laughs> in this program for a long time, but I guess it's time to change the speaker. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Sieta. Uh, hello, my name is Sofia, and I'm the second year master student in the American Science Program. And my background was uh, on the medical physics, uh, so I uh, gained my bachelor's degree in Polytechnic University, on the program of medical physics, and I also worked uh, in the laboratory of molecular neurodegeneration, where I studied um, uh, diseases of the brain and the work uh, like in the way of molecular biology and the work with neurons and so on so it was very scientific in direction and uh, yeah uh, I want to continue the speech of Sveta of um, uh, that here uh, you can like uh, have this loving support of the Earth science team because for me, for example, it was very difficult to like to create my ideas or doing something uh, without uh, having this experience of uh, like artistic experience or creating something. Uh, and here it's like very comfortable and uh, loving atmosphere that uh, really uh, here people try to support you to make something. So I would like uh, highly recommend not to be afraid to suggest your ideas and um, uh, to develop them and if you uh, like afraid uh, still to make it alone you can uh, find uh, collaborators like people who uh, think this way like you and it was uh, uh, it happened with me as uh, uh, I have a team uh, of which we with which we make uh, um, Excellent project which is called Grounding, and uh, one of the member of the team of Sakir is Victoria. And there are four of us, and uh, I think we made really good uh, work and uh, have a really big support from the center to create this. And we also have an uh, opportunity to uh, participate in Ars Electronica, which was also like very, so it's the most. Uh, famous uh, art and science festival and we participated in it and we uh, already have it in the portfolio that's really amazing. Uh, yes, yeah, so what else I wanted to say? Don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like don't afraid to, to, to create something and yeah. It's a, a really big opportunity especially in more University where there are so uh, many laboratories and specialists in so various uh, specializations, so it's a really good chance, don't miss it. Thanks, Sophia. I only wanted to add that you can also like watch Sophia's works here. <laughs> there is it right over there. Uh, so my name is Ksenia, um, and this is my Maria, we are the first year students of Art and Science Master's programs. Uh, so speaking about myself, my background is that I have a bachelor degree in architecture. So I'm basically an architect. And um, when I chose to be studying architecture, this was my impression and perception of what art and science is. Because I thought that this is like the perfect discipline on the intersection of art and sciences. So this was something I was eager to like explore, to know, and to be professional in. And after spending five years to receive a bachelor degree in architecture, I was actually very much frustrated with my experience because this is what this is was definitely not something I was expecting. <laughs> uh, so this yeah this was hard. <laughs> It is my personal experience, but it's very far from both like, art and science. <laughs> it, was, it was just something. So I was uh, continuing to, like, because uh, I was doing something like, let's say, media art, but it was just a hobby. It was something I was doing at my free time. And uh, it, it developed into something very serious because in the end, um, the team, <laughs> I met Maria and a lot of other people and we had like a team 
we participated in different, like, uh, let's say, lar light art festivals within Russia. So it became something more than just a hobby. And I couldn't adjust that to my architectural practice. It was just not like combining in any way. And I need to, uh, I needed to choose like whether I need to be a professional architect or I want to stick to something that I like doing, basically. I'm very <laughs> happy that the creative director of our team happens to be here today. <laughs> okay. So, um, and uh, I've actually uh, made an attempt to continue as an architect for my masters, but it never worked. And occasionally, I found out about the art and science masters program, and uh, like finishing the first semester right now, I would say that this is the art and science experience <laughs> I was like looking forward to, uh, because yeah, uh, it is like. The uh, perfect com com combination of everything connected to like artistic and technological development of the projects and uh, like even like critical thinking philosophy, including stuff like that. Uh, things that I like and ins inspired me the most about the program are actually yeah, the uh, like introduction course uh, into like art and science. Is very inspiring, I would say. And I had like my personal like huge fangirl moment because <laughs> uh, as uh, Lina and Adelia presented, one of the speakers of the programs right now is Dmitry Marozov, uh, like a technological artist under the nickname of Toll. And I was uh, just like fangirling after <laughs> him for, for for like a lot of years. I was just like amazed with his work and. Uh, I have never thought that I would like meet him in person or will have an ability to actually like work with this artist, something like that. It's just an unbelievable experience. I haven't processed that till this day. <laughs> because uh, like last year here in St. Petersburg and at the like Manege, we had an exhibition of it was called something like uh, Russian kin kinetics art and he uh, I was only visiting that to see Dmitry's work <laughs> because I was uh, like such a big fan of what he was doing and now he's the head of the student, my artistic studio I'm studying in here and uh, this is just it is like so huge series that I couldn't process it till, till this day seriously and um, I think what makes this program special is that uh, all of the managers of the Art and Science Center, all of the professors are actually like interested in everyone, like in each student. This is a, a very unfamiliar experience because if, you, if when you're studying in like just usual Russian university, there is a lot of people like you and there is like a very competitive, let's say, um, way of studying and everyone is just like separate and I have never experienced like that interest in me as a person and me as an artist and a very strange feeling of everyone being there to help you to find out the best way like there is a practice of um, like exchanging the feedback on everything like if you have problems with understanding something it is just that simple you can just tell that I didn't get this, or I have trouble understanding that, and uh, the course can be adjusted, or you will receive some help, and the opportunities uh, the Eatmo University is giving, because here you can, like throughout the managers of the center, you can get the access to all of the like, labs and other departments of the university if you need that for development, developing your work. And the final thing is, uh, as all girls already said, is the community. Because I think the, like, the main goal of this master's program is uh, the community building. Is that you will meet a lot of people who you will probably continue working with after finishing this master's. And um, yeah, this whole like, atmosphere of like, exchanging ideas, not being judgmental, there is no, nothing about like, that thing, feeling something like you can't sit with us, you're not a real artist, like nobody's judging because we are all here to figure out what, like, what is it to be a science art artist, what is it to be artist, like what is art and all of those things are debatable and adjusting. 
So this is our, this is my personal experience. Thanks. Thank you, Xenia. So hello, everyone. My name is Maria Mashenska. As Xenia say, I'm studying on the first year master's program art and science. So I choose natural sciences specialization, and I have an art education, and I'm. I'm really, really inspired by natural forms and some algorithms, but I also want to go deeper and I also want to be a researcher, and that's why I come to this program. And uh, uh, I think that uh, the field of art and science can, can change our relationship between people, technologies and I think all the world around us. So uh, that's why I come to this program and now I, uh, together with my fellow students, uh, uh, we create a project about plant vision and it is about uh, interspecies communication and we want to interpret the signals, uh, plant signals decoded by neural network. So I'm really inspired by it, and uh, uh, what I also want to say is that uh, we have really warm and open atmosphere uh, on our program, and we always can get support, and uh, it's really cool. And also what I really like is uh, that we have incredible teachers and speakers, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, also, we have a chance to take a part uh, of organizing uh, organization, some events, lectures, and also now we organize uh, Let's Art and Science Club. We have a Telegram chat. You, you're all very welcome. So, for me, this program is um, like a unique chance to grow like, like an artist and uh, to work. Uh, um, to work with scientists, to work in labs, and to to work with another people who are on the one, like on the same wave with me. So here it is. Thank you. I just wanted to add something to what girls were saying because they were, I think, very modest and not really didn't tell um, everything about their projects. For example, Sophia is part of the team team who created the project which is called Grounding or Zizimulenia and they had a fantastic um, super intensive educational program last year as I've said and they will be holding um, hopefully an exhibition uh, in the soil museum so maybe they, they made an open call they worked with artists so that's like the fantastic work, work that they did during their studies and Victoria is here as well uh, the second member of this team of students uh, Ksenia and Maria uh, during their, well, basically the first semester with the other group of students, they applied to uh, student uh, grant, uh, yeah, one of the student grants and basically presented, made an exhibition here, um, which became part of the curatorial, second curatorial um, forum. So that's another opportunity that they got and that they worked on this exhibition with uh, other students and Svetlana, I think, with their Biorobotry uh, 019, they are very active and participate in different exhibitions um, in Russia, in St. Petersburg, and internationally. Uh, so that's, if we have questions to our students and the graduates, <laughs> uh, if you have any questions or comments, um, you're free to ask. Finalize it a little bit because uh, Aliyah made like an important comment so that uh, we were talking about a lot about the community about studying but the thing is is yeah as it is mentioned that you can like straight away from joining at your first semester you can uh, like take part in some kind of activity because there are exhibitions going on in the residency like all the time and you can choose like the way you want to be participating, you wanted to exhibit something or help organizing it. Uh, as Marsha said, like this semester we made like an art and science students club. 
so that the students of different universities can get to know what art and science is. And we are eager, like we are in search of like scientists and specialists in different things to become our collaborators. This is our way to search for collaborators in a way. And yeah, uh, there is a, an opportunity, something as uh, Sophia uh, is part of, you can just like create an education, educational program or an open call for other students. So there are a lot of like different activities outside of just studying. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so if we don't have any more questions to students, so basically we are here, you can ask them uh, while we will be watching the mediation. And now I, I would like to give the floor to Laura, right? Am, am I right or no? Because um, now we can have in a mediation and Laura is the teacher of the course, the speaker, and the curator of this exhibition to tell you more about the projects that you can see. So, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, as Alia said, um, so during last semester we had a course of art and natural sciences that was given by Lindsay Walsh. She is an American artist and now she lives in Berlin. And she developed a serial of practices for our students to work with bacteria, with uh, biomaterials, with plants. Uh, however, because of the situation of coronavirus, it was impossible that she came uh, to St. Petersburg. So we designed this course in the way that she was all, all the time connected in Zoom. We were in the laboratories and I was leading the practical steps with the students. So we become a, a team and uh, as a uh, way to conclude the course, we had a showcase of the projects from the students. Uh, so what you will see here is uh, the projects that students develop using these technologies. Uh, some of them are still the prototypes of what of the final project they will elaborate. Um, and so all the exhibition has some connections. You will see that it's really not human. It's far from anthropocentrism. So we are really uh, interacting with microorganisms, bacteria, spiders. Um, so I think today we have the mediation with the artists. Uh, we are missing two artists. They uh, sent the message and they apologize, but I will also lead you. Uh, these two artworks um, and I think if you if it's okay for everyone we can continue in English yes yeah okay if not the, the, the artists speak of course Russian uh, so in any question that you have they can also answer so thank you for being here and let's join to the artworks around the artworks <laughs> thank you Hey, okay.